The tragedy in Mount Meron is an inconceivable freak accident, but the infrastructure and the masses of people gathering at Mount Meron every year on Lagba Omer is a known issue, which begs the question, what needs to change? Joining me to discuss is former member of Knesset for the Yeshatid Party and current Secretary General for the Confederation of United Zionists, uh, Rabbi Dov Lippmann, and former head of the Office of Israel's Chief Rabbi, Dov Halbertal. Uh, Rabbi Halbertal, thank you as well, and Rabbi Dov Lippmann, thank you as well for joining us today. Now, this is an awful tragedy, of course. Rabbi Lippmann, I wanted to start with you, though. Tell us how, how you were involved in the funeral planning and, and what's been your experience, really, getting approval for, uh, for family members and outside of the country into Israel uh, to, see, to see their loved ones' burials. I have to tell you that with everyone talking about the negatives and what went wrong government-wise, there's something really positive that's been happening here as the Immigration Authority, together with the Health Ministry, with the Diaspora Affairs Ministry, all worked in tandem together with many of us who are involved in helping diaspora Jews and new Olim to Israel to have a really clear, clean, simple process to help these people get to Israel today. We have 37 family members landing today in Israel for the funerals. And it was a process which took a lot of effort, but a lot of working together. Uh, thank God all of these families will not have to go through the full corona protocol as usually is required. There's some basic things that they needed to do. But the most important thing is that Israel enabled them to get here, to be able to be here for the burials of their loved ones. Rabbi Halbertal, have you been involved in any of the, uh, the funeral practices uh, or have you been to any of the funerals? What's, what's your take on what happened and how this happened? I, I, I wasn't involved directly. I, I know a few families that uh, my neighbors and others that I know that they lost their, 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 their grandchild or, or a nephew or something like this. Okay. And I would have said that there are, it's a, such a tragedy that there are no words, it's very difficult to express condolences. And I would have said that in such a case, as we say in the Jewish tradition, only God can comfort them. All right, now I want to stay with you for a moment, Rabbi Halbertal, because you know, you, you've worked with the government ministries, with, the, with uh, uh, rabbinate authorities as well. We've heard that changing anything at Mount Meron, where we've known for years that there are problems there with respect to infrastructure, We've heard that changing anything at the mountain is next to impossible because of various religious sects and their pressure that they have uh, on maintaining the site. W do you think that anything will change now? It, uh, it will have to be changed. Nothing will stay the same. But I, I have to say a few words that I think people can be blamed right now without any investigation. I mean, Let's start with the first chain of uh, command, the policy, the police. Uh, I think three had, has to be, had, they had to resign in the spot in the moment, uh, one, one, one minute after all the tragedy uh, occurred. I mean, the district command and the general command and the, and the, and the minister of internal security should have been uh, uh, fired or, or, or resigning in a moment because they have the, the direct responsibility, at least the, minister, the ministerial one, but it's certainly more than that. That's first. Second, I think the director or the chairman of the holy places had to resign in the moment because he's the the the, the the civil responsible on the place and you cannot be in the in, in your in your task in your place when such a tragedy of 45 people dying in, the, in this place and so many wounded uh, that those had to be the norms but it will not happen because we are we have no moral norms here and it will have to be investigated. I don't think, as you said before, that it couldn't be changed. It well, it's, well, it's, not, it's changed. not that it couldn't be changed. It's that, you know, and you have just referenced some of the regional council heads and, and who govern 
uh, Mount Meron and, and other religious areas, and you said that they should resign. Again, many of them are saying that they knew about these issues and they tried to change them, but were met with uh, great obstacles from the Haredi community in that they didn't want anything to be changed without massive oversight. Uh, but Dov, Dov Lippmann, Rabbi Lippmann, I'd like to turn to you now for your take on this. What, what could be improved and how might we go about doing it? I do have to be honest with you, Aaron, that it's difficult on the day when we're still in the middle of the funerals to be focusing on that aspect. We really mm. are coming together as a people. I was that Friday at the Forensic Institute and saw a wide range of the Jewish people, from ultra-Orthodox to more modern, uh, and even secular, all there suffering losses. So we are a unified people right now, and we have to get through this mourning process together. Having said that, we absolutely have to have a proper interrogation, investigation, to see exactly what was wrong, and we don't have to be afraid of a saying that certain people are responsible and people absolutely losing their positions if right. they are responsible. I also have to mention the young people who we've lost are the ones who wanted to be so close to the rabbi's grave, the so spiritual, almost angelic young people that I'm hearing about. And I think we really have to go through that process first before we can have a clear mind to be able to really address it. But if you're asking specifically, 100%, there should never ever be a situation where that many people are put into that small of an area without the proper safety measures that apply to any other event in the country. As a religious person, I'm saying we can never say that religion somehow should go over overcome the need for security. We just read in the Torah portions recently about living with Torah. We're supposed to, that's the number one priority. And therefore, as religious people, we have to make sure that's always the number one priority as well. Do you include then even large scale infrastructural changes and, and renovations at holy sites? I do believe there has to be investment in that. By the way, I'll mention another thing. Having been at the Forensic Institute, that needs a complete overhaul as well, as I saw complete chaos and confusion there on Friday, not because of the workers there who were trying to do their best, but because of a building that must be dated to the 1950s, for all I could tell, with no technology and no infrastructure. There has to be a real looking at both Meron, at both all the other holy places, and even the Forensic Institute, a full look at all of the state's infrastructure. We have technology, we have the ability to do things. We cannot wait for tragedies before we assess every situation and make sure that we're in the best situation possible, first and foremost, for people's safety. All right, Rabbi, Rabbi Halbertal, final comments? I think everybody of us religiously have to take responsibility, I mean religiously, uh, uh, feeling that me and others, everybody himself, is blame in some way, you know, in, in the tragedy that happened. But I'm not only every person, I think especially the Haredi, the ultra orthodox sect, has to think over the, the thing that uh, something happened, it, it started in the corona uh, and, and, and it's now in, in the wrong, that you have a feeling that the value of life is less than the passion to religion. And that's a, that's a dangerous thing, and it has to be changed. Right. And uh, also, I think in, in our generation, we see the, uh, the, the going towards the mysticism. And, uh, and, and uh, you see it in, in like Baromer in Kever Rashbi, and you see it in Uman, and you see it in big funerals, the exact, the exact a, a behavior that uh, that that brings to to it's not only the danger for for the body that dan more danger to the soul. We have to be more rational, and we have to to make this calculation for for generations to be. All right, Rabbi Dov Halbertal and Rabbi Dov Lipman, thank you again both so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.